In the recent V jump cover, it seems like the surface where Boruto is sitting is actually the moon. Could this be a hint for Boruto's destined encounter with Toneri, where he will find out the secrets of the Jogun Eye? The two blue vortex could also refer to Toneri and Boruto, and how their fated reunion will lead to a vortex of destiny. As we know from the anime, Toneri is sealed on the moon, so how exactly will Boruto unseal him? Let's find out. The possibility of Boruto meeting Toneri to unveil the seven year long mystery of the Jogun first appeared during the Omnipotence incident. Back when chapter 79 dropped, everyone thought since Boruto is being traced by Aida, he will either need to escape to the moon or more likely to the past, where her ability won't work. But after Aida's promise of not revealing Boruto's location, the possibility of time travel faded, but a walk to the moon is not out of question. It was revealed by Amado that Boruto and Kawaki will soon be able to fly around like all Suzuki's. So Boruto taking Sasuke to the celestial planet is pretty conceivable. As I mentioned in my last video, all the details of his new design hint at the time skip taking place a few months before the prologue fight. This means either Boruto has already awakened the pure eye in the next chapter or he will awaken it on screen before the Kawaki fight. This detail from the V-Jump cover enhances the possibility of Boruto entering the celestial body with his master. The destined reunion between the two is the need of the R because the plot of the Jogun needs to be enlightened in the manga. In the anime, Boruto used the Jogun to identify the dark chakra of Nyu, a yokai associated with Sumire. I believe Toneri has some connection to either Nyu or Sumire and here is why. Sumire seems to have a jellyfish haircut and in the Japanese mythology, jellyfish are admired by the dragon king Ryujin. What's interesting is that the time freeze technique that was used to seal Toneri is also named after the dragon king. It could be that Sumire's character has been inspired by Otohime, the princess of the dragon palace. In the Buddhist account, the dragon king is known as Sagara which means ocean in Sanskrit. Sumire's water release could be inspired from this part of the lore. The more amazing part is that the daughter of the Dragon King marries a deity named Lee Gozo Tenno in this account and it's the same name that has been given to the sealing technique that was used on Sumire. All these hints point out a pure connection between Sumire, Toneri and Boruto's Jogun. Maybe the reason she remained immune from Aida's spell also has something to do with it. I feel like the Jogun's extract from the beginning of the anime is actually a clever foreshadowing of the events of the two blue vortex. Boruto in the time skip might start to activate the Jogun out of blue, just like in the anime. However, this time it would catch the eye of Sasuke. Now the person who could act as a bridge between the moon and Boruto must be Sumire and here is why. We know that Nyu is canon to the manga, so maybe Sumire will summon him in order to send some message to Boruto and upon sensing the yokai being, the Jogun shall manifest in his eye. If Sumire has been inspired from the princess of the dragon palace, then it's very likely that Nyu will become the key to help Toneri escape from the time freeze. So what if we will get to see all these events as flashbacks and Boruto will be on the moon in the next chapter? The person who could have further helped him in getting there could be none other than Momoshiki and here is why. First and foremost, he's an expert at Shinjutsu, so he would easily identify the eye of Boruto and might even tell him that it has something to do with the moon. Sasuke would remember the events of the last movie when Naruto went onto the moon, so he might agree to go along with Boruto. There they would find Toneri and the manifestation of the Jogun might unseal him from the palace of the dragon. King. However, this revelation of Momoshiki about the Jogun and the moon could be a lot more complex. In order to figure out the complexity, we will need to understand why there were two different prophecies about Boruto at first place. If you think about it, the optimistic prophecy does not promise Boruto the regain of everything that he lost. While Momoshiki's prophecy said he will lose everything, it was even hinted by Toneri separately that Boruto's main opponent is his own destiny. When his destiny got exchanged with Kawaki, he got trapped in a position where he is facing his own fate. The prophecy of Toneri did not even mention the rewrite of history or some divine event. It only said that Boruto's eye will guide him in his mission of dispelling the darkness from the world. Well, if you think about it, even if we completely remove Momoshiki from the plot, Kawaki was still destined to get Ishiki's karma, followed by the bioweapon made by Amado. This means Boruto was already destined to beat Kawaki, even if Momoshiki hadn't come into his life. However, the arrival of Momoshiki led to the Omnipotence incident, which made things even worse for the blue-eyed boy. Now, there is a solid explanation behind why Kawaki will have been the same without Momoshiki that I will cover in a moment. But first let's solve the mystery of Boruto's dual destiny and how it all makes sense. It seems like the original prophecy of Toneri had led Boruto into a time loop kind of thing where everything he does had been predestined by some superior power. Let's say there is an Osusuki god who needs Boruto to awaken the Jogun. When the prophecy was made, Momoshiki was not a part of Boruto's life so he had no idea about it. 
However, upon making Boruto his vessel, he started realizing the abnormalities in his fate, which he regarded as something of interest in the beginning. Back when he revived Boruto, he told him that the Blue Eyes crisis will soon arrive and he cannot see how it will happen. If we think about it, if Momoshiki hadn't revived Boruto, it would have left the prophecy of Tony incomplete. Yet he chose to bring Boruto back and even recall the predestined incident of omnipotence. It wasn't until chapter 76 when Momoshiki realized a divine technique is being used by Aida, which means before this event, he wasn't sure about how Boruto will lose everything. It was more of a puzzle that he kept on solving with every passing moment. This means he cannot see the future, rather he can see the fragments of the predestined time loop which is liable to change. In a nutshell, Momoshiki's presence has humongously affected the original destiny of Boruto cause unlike others, he's able to catch any shift in reality or similar event. If Momoshiki wasn't there, Boruto might still have the Jogun but the circumstances that he's facing wouldn't be so miserable. By this we can conclude that Momoshiki could play an important role in enlightening the Jogun to Boruto. He became a part of a destiny where he did not belong, which ended up worsening the life of his vessel. In other words, the evilness of Momoshiki made Boruto a part of his karma, delaying the awakening of his pure power. However, the yin yang concept says that there is always some good in evil. So could it be that Momoshiki will help Boruto in reaching the moon? Well, the monster had high hopes from the omnipotence incident and was certain about taking over Boruto after that. But the strong mental resolve of his vessel made it clear to him that the future he is predicting is viable to change. Momoshiki is not an Osusuki god, so his predictions can't go correct every time. While the true Osusuki god who has chosen Boruto for the Jogun must have planned it well from the beginning. It could be that Momoshiki will understand the complexities of Boruto's fate and why he actually ended up fusing with an Osusuki. This understanding of destiny might motivate the monster to tell Boruto that he needs to go to the moon. After all, his only hope had been shattered when Boruto decided to not give up on his body. So maybe he would guide him in the divine resolve from now on. The main thing that Momoshiki will realize is the concept of predestined genes. Boruto being born with huge amount of Osusuki power makes his destiny a lot different than other human beings. As Ishiki also said the same thing when he faced off Kashin Koji, the same can be applied to another renowned plot point of the story. All genes are actually predestined. Then if Amaro succeeds in reviving RKB, she will end up dying again cause her fate won't change. Similarly in Boruto's case, Momoshiki's involvement could only delay the Jogun awakening instead of stopping it. He was destined to be a prodigy who would frighten the vessel of an Osusuki god, just like his sister. But when his fate got intertwined with Momoshiki, he ended up on a different path that will eventually lead him to the same destination. All in all, Boruto's training on the moon is a huge possibility and it could be that we will see him and Sasuke there in the next chapter. Talking about why Kawaki's fate was not dependent on Momoshiki's arrival, check out this video to find the answer to this question. I will see you next time.